The FW-190C is a pretty rare premium fighter in War Thunder's German air tree. Let's check it out. The Focke-Wulf 190C, which first entered service in 1941, was one of Germany's primary combat aircraft in World War II. Most versions of it were powered by the BMW 801 radial engine, or some version of it, which generally gave the FW-190 very good performance. But the aircraft didn't always do so well at high altitude, which ended up being a bit of an issue as entire fleets of high-altitude Allied bombers started to appear in the skies. Now, a number of solutions were proposed. Some were built and developed into operational types, and the basic FW-190 slowly evolved into an entire family of closely related aircraft that shared visual and structural similarity, but had sometimes very different performance. One example of this was the FW-190C. The C model used the Daimler-Benz DB603 engine, which was an inverted V12 rather than a radial engine, along with the Hearth TK11 turbocharger and some rather extensive additional cooling systems. This required a complete redesign of the aircraft's front section, along with the installation of two air scoops on the lower fuselage, as well as some external piping along the wing routes. All of these modifications required further changes to the tail in order to maintain the center of gravity, as well as some additional changes to the weapon installations. The FW-190C also featured a pressurized cockpit and proved to be about 10 to 15 percent faster than the regular FW-190 models once it got up to altitude. The C model was able to operate comfortably up to around 10,000 meters. However, there were some issues. The turbocharger installation proved to be somewhat unreliable and was very maintenance heavy. In the end, the C model succeeded in meeting its performance goals, but other high altitude aircraft were becoming available and the additional logistics issues that the C model presented stopped it from entering regular production and service. What we have in War Thunder is a premium fighter at BR 5.3 in the German air tree. This was originally a reward from the Christmas event in 2018. The FW 190C makes some sacrifices for its high altitude performance, not the least of which is that it gives up some of its guns. The plane is armed with two 20mm cannons and two 8mm machine guns, giving a burst mass of barely 3 kilograms. This is pretty light for a fighter at this BR, and the C model hits a lot softer than some of the other FW-190s in the middle ranks. Now the good news is, you get a ridiculous amount of ammo. The plane gets a pretty good selection of ammo belts, which should suit a variety of different preferences and playstyles, from tracers to stealth belts and everything in between. My personal preference is air target belts for the cannons and universal for the machine guns, but, you know, there are tons of options and combos possible. However, there are no external weapons, so if you want to do ground attack, the guns are your only option, and the potential for ground pounding ends up being kind of limited as a result. Now, the flight performance of the FW-190C, as you would expect, is optimized for high altitude. This makes it kind of a fish out of water, since almost all gameplay in combat in War Thunder takes place at very low altitude. If you can manage to get some fights up above 10,000 meters, you're going to be having a pretty good day. But otherwise, the plane is more evenly matched against the competition. It turns pretty well most of the time, but, you know, Spitfires and Zeros are still going to be an issue. And the control services don't lock up at higher speeds as badly as most other planes, so that's something. The rate of climb is okay, but not great, and it doesn't really open up until you get to the higher altitudes, at least comparatively. The C model bleeds energy in sustained turn fights, but it retains its performance pretty well coming out of a high-speed dive. As always, 
all of this is more forgiving in arcade battles. Flying the FW-190C into missions can be a bit of a cat and mouse game. I had some trouble getting footage for the, uh, this review because I found that a lot of my time in the plane was spent just climbing or once at altitude just flying around in a straight line looking for something to attack. And, you know, that kind of footage doesn't really play well for a review like this. Um, I did have the most success with this plane when I was able to climb and intercept enemy bombers that also climbed. But often, they'll just dive when they see you coming, so I ended up wasting a lot of time side climbing and trying to get into high altitude combat that just rarely actually happened. At the lower levels, the performance is much closer to other FW-190s, and some of your potential is going to get left on the table. In dogfights, this wasn't as potent as I had hoped, and really the light burst mass of the guns, combined with a very fragile en engine installation, honestly made it a bit of a challenge to be competitive with the C at this BR, unless I got a down tier. Now to be clear on that, the plane often needs a fair amount of time on target to bring down enemy planes, and its cooling system is very fragile. There are three different coolers, one for oil, two for water, and even light machine gun hits on any of them can be catastrophic and lead to serious overheating in short order. And they're spread out around the aircraft, so you're going to find that it's easier for people to hit your cooling system than it might be if all of your coolers were concentrated in one place. Now, the other side of that is, you know, without any damage, the cooling system is very effective. You can fly the FW-190C in WEP for pretty long periods of time, even at lower altitudes, before it'll start to overheat. And I was honestly surprised by the endurance. As I mentioned before, there isn't a lot of potential for ground attack, and I can't really see this plane having much of a role as close air support. The only time I found myself attacking things on the ground was really when there just weren't any planes near me and I had nothing else to do. Um, and in realistic battles, that ends up happening quite a bit in prop fights at around this tier. Visually, I absolutely love this thing. The external piping, the huge double air scoop on the underside, and the redesigned nose, combined with the short wing FW-190 layout, yeah. In my opinion, this is the best looking FW-190 version in War Thunder if not, you know, one of the top two or three best-looking prop fighters overall in the game. And it is 100% true facts that flying a cool-looking plane is more fun than flying an ugly one. See? It, it says so right here. I got the seal and everything. Now, landing the plane is tricky. It's got very tall front gear, and it's a tail dragger so applying even mild braking for more than a couple of seconds is going to flip this thing over on its nose and count as a crash. You'll want to practice landing a bit and just tap the brakes for a second or two at a time. I was usually able to skid turn without flipping once it got under about 80 kilometers an hour or so, and overall, this is not a simple plane to land safely, especially if you've taken some damage. As with other FW-190 versions, the cockpit is excellent. Great overall visibility, big, easy-to-find instrumentation, and a simple gun sight. You really can't ask for much more. To close out, I'm the Fuckawolf 190C. This plane features amazing high-altitude performance for a prop fighter. It's engine cooling is quite strong, and it can fly around in WEP for long periods of time. It's got a huge supply of ammo for its guns, and it's a premium fighter, so you get some solid bonuses with it. However, the cooling system is very fragile. The overall firepower isn't great, landings are tricky, and a lot of the performance potential is wasted in War Thunder's low-altitude-centric matches. The final verdict on the FW-190C is that it's a fun vehicle to play, 
but you won't get the most out of it unless you can actually find some high altitude combat. The plane ends up being a bit more gimmicky than meta defining, but it's not a bad gimmick. As always, thanks for watching.